The Hotel Chester is located in Starkville, Mississippi, home to the Mississippi State University. Husband and wife, David and Suki Molendor, bought the hotel in 2000. Before buying the Chester, David traveled the world as a hotel troubleshooter. Well, I've worked in the hotel industry 39 years. Thank you for calling Hotel Chester. Wanted to try and settle down and give our kids one stable place to be. Oh, one of us got to get taller. <laughs> to begin with, a 36-bedroom hotel was a real success, packed with students and locals. How you doing? Good. <laughs> <laughs> then a sudden tragedy hit the family. David was coming home and was uh, involved in a, a, a major auto accident. We thought we lost him. That changed all of us it's overnight. He crushed his feet and was bedridden for almost six months. It's a little dated. The report is very dated. In David's absence, standards dropped and customers stopped coming. Well, we were losing so much money that I had to file for bankruptcy. The financial losses have been so bad, the bank foreclosed on their home. So now they're living in the hotel. Living in the hotel, working together in the hotel. I feel tired and I feel uh, out of sync with the world. They couldn't afford payroll. So Suki left her job in real estate and took over as chef and temporary manager. It was my idea that we open a sushi restaurant. Never worked in any restaurant kitchens before in my entire life. But I knew how to make the sushi. My mouth's confused. But despite her best intentions, with no formal training, oh. she's struggling. Oh. Uh -oh. oh, where's my knife? Suki spends all her time in the hotel, so she's blind to the tens of thousands of students and tourists who could be potential customers. And the hotel's bedrooms and dining room are empty most nights. I just need those entrees. Yeah, but I guess they're coming. You know, I see it in my parents' eyes. I see that they're physically exhausted, that they're mentally drained. My mom, she used to be lively, vibrant. She's honestly half the woman she used to be. Man, I forget. I'm losing my mind. When I came to this place, I was 180 pounds of twisted blue steel, sex appeal, and mucho hell. And this old bitch has worn me down to 200 pounds of flab, gab, and total no mas. With almost no money coming into the hotel, David and Suki are hanging on by a very thin thread. I need Gordon to help my parents because if this hotel doesn't change, it's we lose everything. This is it. I'm in Starkville, Mississippi's college town. I'm on my way to the Hotel Chester. Mississippi State University, founded in 1878. Any hotel with a college on their doorstep should be absolutely thriving, not just for the students, but with their parents as well. I can't wait to check into the Hotel Chester. Where is this place? I can't even see the sign. Okay, I'm pulling over here. Got to know where it is. How are you? I'm looking for the Hotel Chester. I've never been there before. You've yeah, never been there? It's one yeah, I'll down. find it. I've gone around three times. It's easy to miss. It's easy to miss. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't see any signs. Well, there may be one sign, but I mean, it's not, right. it's not too big. Huh? OK, great. <laughs> Bring up that. Excellent. Thank you. Enjoy. The students never go to the Chester, despite the fact it's right next to the campus. Weird. There we are there. Historic Hotel Chester entrance. Well. Such a huge building and such a tiny sign. It's madness. Finally. Morning, sir. Hey, good How are morning. You? How are you? Good to see you, Gordon. Good to see you, and I'm David Gordon. David, nice to see you. Well, I finally found the place. That is so confusing there. You know that. There's no sign on Main Street. I drove straight by. And see him on the corner of the building? A tiny sign saying it's historic. That, that's what's historic about oh, it. That's, it's, that's, that's, historically been a bad entrance. Now we have you in an executive king room. And then here's two keys for you, because I'm giving you two because men don't follow instructions as well as women. Okay. Or in case you get lucky, hell yes. <laughs> 
So you're a hands-on owner. Uh, you run the desk all by yourself? My wife is the chef. She's taught herself. You can meet lady? Well, can I finish my spiel? I thought you already finished. So uh, breakfast is included. We do have fresh cut fruit. That's nice to know, fresh cut fruit. We, what would uh, be the alternative? Canned? No. Uh, no fruit, I think. Oh. Really <laughs> I love your sense of humor. <laughs> it's dry and very funny. Fresh cut fruit for breakfast. Yes, sir. Nice. Now, I just want you to know I'm not always at the desk. OK. But you'll be able to recognize me even if I'm walking away from you, because I'm the one who looks like he's riding a chicken. Riding a chicken? Yeah. I've never ridden a chicken. You have to show me. Oh. Well, you just have to look at my legs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get Suki, OK? OK, great. That poor chicken. OK, now. I've got a guest that wants to meet you. Oh, okay. uh oh what do you do with that? I am making tamago. Gordon is here to help us out. And I'm terrified, but at the same time, I, I'm so excited. OK. Oh! Hi! Hello. How are you? Nice to see you. And don't worry, I've had worse than wet hands. Nice to meet you. I washed my hands. Uh, that's very kind. Thank you for that. Uh, and Thank you. Suki, right? Nice to meet you. Likewise, good to see you too. <laughs> What's it like working with your wife? I love my wife, so it's mm -hmm. nice to be around her until she gets her nose out of joint. She has a chef's temperament. If okay. you're not familiar with it, right, they, well. they can fly off the handle pretty easy. What's your background? I'm a hotel guy. I was in Vietnam, and I went to so hotel, hotel school. So you qualified uh, as a hotelier? Well, so in my view, yeah. Well, that's great. That's good, good to hear. <laughs> Graduated with a major in hotel and restaurant management, and I've been in the business almost 40 years. So, in a nutshell, what's wrong with the hotel? That's a question. We're not sure. <clears throat> we don't think it's a quality issue. Uh, neither for our rooms or our food and, and beverage. Why don't you both show me to the room? OK. I've been a general manager of a lot of hotels. I eventually became a turnaround guy to take on problem properties. So my big surprise here is that I'm having a hell of a time trying to turn this thing around. We just call it an executive oh. king. Oh, dear. OK. This is it. Yes, sir. What is that, swing? It's a uh, leather, but it's a uh, rough leather and very difficult to clean. And it's so bland. I mean, it's like a cheap motel chain. I feel like I'm in the witness protection program. This is depressing here. So when was the last time the roof was touched? 2003. 2003, so 10 years ago. Yeah. It feels like something out of the 1970s. Our hotel rooms are dated, you know, we try to call it period furniture. Yeah, I don't know what to say. It always tells you that a place is on the decline when you walk in and you've got walls are in a mess, scuffs everywhere, and big marks on the sofas that you're expected to pay good money to sit down in. So far, I'm not digging it. I'm going to unpack, and then like to come down and um, have a bite to eat. Suki, so what's your experience in the kitchen? My father had a sushi restaurant in Washington, D.C. Parents of a Japanese yeah, restaurant? had. My did you father passed kitchen? away. Of course. But did you work in the kitchen? No, just washing dishes. <laughs> Anyway, this I'm going to unpack. Thank you. OK, hey. Yeah. Thank Good to see you, you. likewise. Yes, and nice I'll pop down and have a bite to eat. OK? okay. okay. Thank you. So, you know, I feel like the guy who walked into a bar with a big frog on his head, went up to the bar and asked the bartender for a drink. And the bartender said, man, I tell you, you got a problem, don't you? And the frog said, yeah, I'll I sure do. Day. Can you cut this ward off my ass? <laughs> And God, can that man talk? Bars and restaurants in a vibrant college town like this are always packed at lunchtime. But this place is dead. I'm Lindsay. How are you? Good. There you go. Let me get you something to drink. Do you have some ice cold water? OK. Please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, my darling. Um, what would you recommend? Strawberry field sushi is uh, very popular. It's a little bit sweeter. I'll try it. Las Vegas as an appetizer as well. And then, oh, the Sakura. Five individual rolls rolled into one. I don't know how you execute all that Japanese food on that menu when you're not trained. Doesn't quite make sense. Oh, my goodness. This is not good. There's not a lot of people in Starkville that like our sushi. It's a little bit different from what other places in Starkville have. Oh. God, that 
Kessler. Suki runs her kitchen the way she wants to. It's always takes too long in between tickets, but there was really nothing I could do about it. This food is taking way too long. I've been waiting over an hour for raw fish. Oh, my God. I can't take this anymore. Oh, God. Damn it. I'm at Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester, and I've been waiting for my lunch for a very long time. Damn it. Jeez. <laughs> I nodded off there. My God. Does the sushi usually take this long? Yes, sir. What is this one? Las Vegas. Ooh, oh, my God. Salmon cream, cream cheese and asparagus, and then it's deep fried and uh, comes with a jalapenos. Fried salmon with cream cheese. It's disgusting. What a strange combination. Very weird. It doesn't work for me, that one. I mean, it's just um, greasy. You um, can get this out of the way. As quick as possible. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. This is dreadful. My first impressions of the food here is that it's as bad as the rooms. Sakura. Sakura. And there's cream cheese in the middle. Look at that thing. So it's pretty big, right? So how are you supposed to get it in your mouth? I've never eaten it before. Let's try. Come on. Me? We're in this together. Oh, no, you ordered this one all on your own. That's yours. It's yours there. Ready? Open wide, please. Wait, there is no way this is going to fit my mouth. Ready? One, two, three. Oh. Uh-uh, I can't do it. Now I know how my granddad feels when he puts his new teeth in. <laughs> Can uh, I throw uh, it away now? Yeah. So you took one little bite? I did. Damn. Disaster. Total disaster. How did it taste, by the way? I'm very good. The Sakura is very chewy. Suki does try her best, but she has no idea what she's doing. What's wrong with the Sakura? Bland, ugly, chewy, strange combination. Chewy. Yep. And impossible to put in your mouth. Let me tell you about my sushi. I'm not a Morimoto or Nobu. Absolutely not. I'm doing my best, and I respect rice. What is this one? Strawberry field. Now look at that. Strawberry on sushi. On behalf of every Japanese chef in America, I'd like to apologize. It's very weird. Which part is so just, you just, weird? You, you wouldn't cover white tuna with strawberries and then glaze it. Strawberry fields. I'd rather fucking eat a beetle. It's too sweet. Strawberries don't belong with tuna. I am frustrated that Gordon does not like uh, my sushi. I've tried all I can. How you doing, honey bun? Uh, he doesn't like any. He doesn't like any of it. No. <laughs> so, truthfully, what is wrong with this place? Lack of business. So on an average weekend, how many guests would you do? On a busy weekend, maybe 12 people. Are they in-house guests, hotel Usually. guests? Usually. So virtually nobody from the outside? Correct. Jesus. Anyway, where are the owners? Can you uh, tell me where they are? Sure. Thank you. They've got just 36 bedrooms, yet on a busy night, just 12 guests eat here. With food that bad, I'm not surprised. Congratulations on the longest lunch I've ever had in my entire cooking career. That was 97 minutes. Yeah, and half of it was raw. As a novice cook, why are you making sushi? It's crazy. I'm trying my best to, to at least introduce Mississippi Let's eat a little bit healthier. There's nothing healthier with my lunch. Maybe a health warning. Surely you should be giving the locals what they want to eat. That's why they come. Well, no, no, talking no. to Lindsay, the only customers we get now are the ones staying in the hotel, which is practically no one. The business is on his ass. And how much debt are you in? Over $900,000. $900,000. Right. We are in debt. Please don't say you don't know. Shit. 
So far, Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester has been a massive letdown. Hotel Chester entrance, well. Such a huge building and such a tiny sign. The dated Solar's rooms are awful. It's like a cheap motel chain. Strawberry on sushi. The sushi is the worst I've ever had. Man, it's hideous. And David, the co-owner, has just admitted to me and to his wife that they're almost a million dollars in debt. $900,000. Right. We are in debt. Please don't say you don't know. I'm deeply sorry, and I'm, I'm sad that you're upset. I'm not upset at you. David should not have been hiding the financial status from me. Finding out she's been kept in the dark has angered Suki. Dave, I, I don't know what we are doing. I do the spending side and you do the paying side. I don't share the finances with Suki. This is getting ridiculous. Because I'm afraid of hurting Suki's feelings. Calm down. No, I'm not going to calm down. While the owners argue, guests who have heard about my visit are arriving at the Chester. For dinner, I'm just going to go to the restaurant, which is just straight shoot right back there, all right? Okay. And tonight, the restaurant and hotel will be full of people for the first time in years. I feel sorry for all of them. How long have you been waiting? I would say at least 45 minutes. 45 minutes. My apologies. How long have you been waiting? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we've been here over in about an hour. An hour. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm sorry. I've never seen anything like this before. It's insane how long these guests are waiting. So, what table is this, Suki? Oh, pardon me, I'm sorry. No, I just asked, what table are you doing? The very first table. The very first table. It's been well over an hour, and Suki is only working on the first table. She's really struggling, and yet Dave is not stepping in to lend a hand. So, you know, over an hour in the service. Would you go in and help her? I would, but, you know, that's just not my territory. Right. Unfortunately. It's like the hotel's falling apart around you. If someone needs you in the kitchen, in the bar, in the reception, shouldn't you be multitasking? The uh, kitchen is her territory. Okay. Well, so, I'm just asking, it's your no, hotel. I, I know, and I appreciate that. Yeah. If the kitchen's not David's territory, then maybe the rooms are. Like wow, touch the blinds so and there's like That's dust all over them. Yeah, kind of a beat up family. Mm -hmm. Looks like they came out of someone's house when they died. This is definitely not the place I want to yeah. hang out. It seems to me that David has checked out. I don't understand what's going on here. This is not good. Suki okay. is totally out of her depth, having only dealt with one of the eight tables waiting for food. Oh no, this is awful. Wow. What's wrong, Danny? They said it wasn't cooked. Yeah, it's cold. Yeah, it needs more cooking. Mom, what's wrong? It's not cooked. You okay? I don't even want to get her in trouble. Why is she bursting into tears? You okay? I'm fine. What, the, the, help me understand. What's going on? No, I just. The fish is undercooked in the center. I know, I know. I just, I don't. Just, don't what? Um. What is it that I'm missing the point? I don't understand why she's in there, plain head chef. Because we don't have anyone else. I mean, she became chef when my dad was in a car accident in 2008. He was bedridden for about six months, and then mom moved in to run the hotel the next day. My mom became a chef overnight. She came to the hotel, saw where she thought she was needed, and jumped in the kitchen. And ever since, she's been trying to make it work. And so how long has it been functioning like this? I mean, I think it's been in this state for about uh, two or three years. My dad has taken a step back and given up a little bit. OK. We have to be strong. Get I some am. fresh air. Get your eyes nice and bright, OK? okay? Mm -hmm. Finally, I get it. The Hotel Chester has been in a tailspin since David's car accident. I wish Stuki or David had told me. Well, the beer garden. Interesting. Suki is just trying to make this work as best she can, but she is failing miserably. And David has hotel knowledge, but since the accident, he has taken a back seat. This whole place feels lost. The owners, the restaurant, the bedrooms, even this garden feels abandoned, just like the dinner guests. The customers are getting so pissed off. I'm gonna have to do something, otherwise this place is gonna go crazy. The Hotel Chester in Starkville, Mississippi, is on the brink of financial disaster, and I've finally found out why. 
My dad was in a car accident in 2008. David's car accident sent the hotel into a sharp decline. Oh, no. Suki is drowning in the kitchen, trying to keep the business afloat. How long have you been waiting? I would say at least 45 minutes. Yeah, we've been here over in about an hour. While her husband David isn't taking the reins, I can't see the diner starve. So I've dashed over to the local supermarket. The least I can do to help poor Suki is to cook up a few sliders before the customers walk out. Those diners are gonna get any food, trust me. Tonight, it's coming from me. That's ridiculous in there. An hour for appetizers, crazy. So sorry about the delay. There's a little uh, beef slider from the barbecue in the garden. I don't want you guys washing away. Everybody got some food now? Yes. Feel a little bit better? The burgers have brought Suki enough time to get through the rest of dinner service without anyone walking out. After a long three hours, everyone has finally been fed. I'm sure Suki is as relieved as me that dinner service is over. How are you, Suki? Fine, fine. fine? Yes. That was a tough one. It was very tough. Yeah? Yes, sir. Why don't you guys get out of here, you go home, let's hook up first thing tomorrow morning. How far is home away from here? This is our home now, that room. What do you mean, this is your home? We live here. You live on site? Yes. You have an apartment here? No, right in there, there's a the handicap room. That's our, that's our home now. You live in the handicap room? Yes. Can you show me? Since Dave's accident, I gave up everything. We have no money, so we had no choice but to live in this room. You live in here? Yes. There's not even a fucking window. No. Suki, I had no idea things were this bad. Well, you have to do what you have to do. I'm so sorry. Well, you know, sometimes you have the bad times. Could you get David? OK. Please? I don't know what else to do. We have two children. I would like for them to be, um, not to have to worry about their mom and dad. OK. So. You were running this hotel. This was your baby. That's right. David? Yes. And sadly, you got involved in a tragic car accident. Yes. What happened? Yes. I, I broke both of my ankles and yeah. my back in two places. We nearly lost him. I mean, you know, I was pretty busted up, so I've been spending most of the past five years just recovering. Why did you sell your house? We couldn't make the payment, and... You foreclosed? Yes. That's terrible. I'm sorry, I didn't know that. And you come home every night now into this bedroom. Uh-huh. This is awful. It is no way to live. I think you deserve something better. I promise I'm going to help you fix this place. OK? Yeah, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Gordon. Thank you. Will you get some rest, please? Sometimes I'll go seven days without stepping out of the hotel. And it's, uh, it's sad. I can't believe David and Suki have been living like this for years. I've never wanted to help two people so badly. I just hope I'm not too late. Rough night's sleep. Um, I couldn't stop thinking about David and Zuki downstairs where they are almost cooped up in that tiny room with no windows. I mean, my sleep was rough, but Christ, I can imagine going through that for three years. Like they've been doing. God. <sighs> David and Suki have sunk so far, they have lost sight of the outside world. If they lose this hotel, then they lose everything. Wow. I need to show them the potential of this place before it's too late. It's like a sink. Oh. Come on. This is ridiculous. I can't even get my feet wet. David and Suki need to see how to make the Hotel Chester a success. I've got a plan. You've let this business swallow the both of you up. Yeah. It is like quicksand. You know, you've lost your way. Not only have you lost the connection with each other, but you lost the connection out there. Out there. The town, the students, the community. Both of you, come with me. I've got something to show you. They can save the life of your hotel. 
in the car, please. When was the last time you two went out for lunch? I can't, I can't remember. remember. You've never been out for lunch together? No. No. Wow. I want to show David and Suki a couple of places that are extremely successful because they tap in to what the community wants. Thank you, Dan. Oh, wow. Uh, lunch, are you always this busy? It's usually busier, actually. On an average weekend, uh, for instance, um, in the middle of summer, how many couples do you do? Hundreds and thousands, probably. I mean, it gets so slam packed. Thanks, and thanks. And thank, you. thank you, sweet. Can you believe? A thousand people a day here. Mm. Like, envious. Good, honest. Yeah. Mississippian food. I just want ten percent. You just want a hundred people a day. Yeah. Ten percent. Oh. I did not know that there were that many people eating now. I've got one more place to show David and Suki to really make sure they see there are plenty of businesses doing well in the town. How cool is this place? Oh, this, is, a, this yeah. is really popular. You know, since my accident, I really haven't gotten around town much. You know, this business is 100 metres from your front door. Thank you. Now, oh, my darling, please, how many covers are you doing a, a day? How many, what's the numbers? Um, about 200 a day. 200 a day. Customers and uh, weekends generally double that. Mm -hmm. So an average of 200 guests a day, 400 of the weekends, and families as well, uh, early families, evenings? Yeah. A lot of our business revolves around uh, college students. Thank you. The purpose of this outing is to show you how these businesses are drawing from the university, how they are open to every market, and it does translate to the rooms. You have a potential gold mine sat there. You have the traffic. You've got to tap into the community. That's what you're not doing. I'm, I'm convinced that's correct. I thought we were always welcoming students. Maybe we were wrong. So let's say, uh, yes, def definitely an eye opener. Now that I've shown David and Suki how much potential there is in Starkville, I need them to commit to turning the Hotel Chester around. That was nice. I enjoyed that. Yeah, I did too. To see it that busy for lunch was incredible. Well, the business is uh, booming there. So. David, you need to get your head back in the game. That's right. I got some great ideas, but you two have to be ready for change. Gordon, whatever direction you help us to get on, we're not going to waver off of that. <laughs> When I arrived at Starkville, Mississippi's Hotel Chester, it was invisible on the main street. Hotel Chester entrance, well, such a huge building and such a tiny sign. And failing to appeal to the people who could make it a success, the college students. I'm convinced Suki and David are now ready for change. Whatever direction you help us to get on, we're not going to waver off of that. So now it's time to reveal the new hotel to David and Suki and their team. Oh my god, look at that! Oh! <laughs> oh my god! Sure as hell don't have to worry oh, about buying it now. Oh, that's wonderful! Come we on. have a sign! Welcome to the new oh, Hotel right. Chester. You're no longer hidden on the main street. Now, customers, locals, will be identifying that it is a hotel. Is it big enough for you, David? I think it's really, really now, great. There is the biggest marketing tool you'll ever need. I love, I love it. it. Should we have a look inside? Yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what Gordon has done with the inside of the hotel. Are you ready? Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> well, jump in. Let's go in, go in, go in. Oh Please, this is definitely, <laughs> definitely <laughs> lovely. <laughs> lovely, lovely. Yes, I love it. Gone is the drab and the dullness. Now this room has character. Isn't this beautiful? I'm genuinely thrilled that if I could, I'd do a somersault backwards, and then if Gordon had let me, I'd kiss him. And even if he doesn't, I may drag him in and give him a big old kiss right on the damn lips. <laughs> Megan, nice to see you. that you're happy. Very happy. Huh? It's more than I can have hoped for, and it seems to be the beginning of the end of our struggle. Do you think the parents of those 20,000 students yes. in the university will want to stay here now? Yes. All right, would you like to see one more room? Yes. 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 Let's go. All right. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Damn, I love this room. Beautiful. 
I'm in a dream. Wonderful, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I mean, I can't ask more. Suki, this is not a chain hotel. This is your no, hotel. No, that's like right. Said, something that's to be proud of. Oh. That's awesome. I've got something else to show you. This one, you're going to absolutely love. Ready? So excited. Please, I'd like to welcome you all to your stunning beer garden. There we go. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh. oh this yes. is what I call a beer garden. Damn. Oh, yeah. Okay. Modern benches. So we have communal benches as well, large parties, uh, families. Additional space there as well we've taken advantage of. Stunning furniture. That's nice. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. You go into the gazebo, we have the most amazing local beers. Oh. Craft beers on tap. Oh, nice. And these stunning craft beers that can rotate oh. local beers to sort of promote stuff locally. That's awesome. The beer garden is awesome. I'm going to christen it myself, and somebody's going to have to carry me out of it before we open the doors to the public. There's one more thing I'd like to show you. Please, come with me. Yes, sir. I love this garden out here. <laughs> Welcome to new Hotel Chester's stunning beer gardens Food. This hotel is in a vibrant college town in the heart of Mississippi. So I've created a menu that will attract a younger crowd and highlight Southern comfort food. Gone is the fusion confusion. <laughs> Suki, I'm sorry, all gone. Good. Southern food fits the location. How can we be in Southville and not have stunning fried green tomatoes? Next to that, we have oyster bacon po' boy. Fried crispy oysters, crispy bacon with a stunning spicy remoulade. And Gordon's Burger. He's a chef, Ooh. and he, from time to time, comes up with some stunning recipes for burgers. Uh, this burger <laughs> recipe um, is featured at Planet Hollywood in Vegas, and it is to die for. The new menu complements the state of Mississippi. I think it really suits the beer garden. Wonderful, wonderful idea. Suki, I have something for you that's going to make your life in the kitchen a whole lot easier. Bear with you one second, please. Now, I've got someone I'd like to introduce you to. Uh, someone who's very special with two uh, unique assistants. Come through, please. Say hello to Enrica Williams. Now, she'll be Hotel Chester's new head chef. This lady is a very experienced chef, and she absolutely knows her stuff. I'm covering Enrica's salary. I'm taking care of that until this place picks up and you can afford to keep it yourself. You okay, sir? <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> Having Suki in the kitchen kind of broke my heart every day, so I'm really looking forward to getting to know the chef and her apprentices and giving them all the support I possibly can. Suki, I want you to keep cooking, but I want you to have a bit of fun with it. And here's how it's going to work. Suki's rebutted grill, skewers, chicken, beef, shrimp, yeah. with garlic, yeah. ginger, soy, marinade. That's a rabata, it's a personal touch. I love it. I love the change. Rabata is classic Japanese barbecue. When you think of a rabata grill, you think marinated, Japanese style. It's easy to execute. And you know what? It cuts a little bit of slack in the kitchen. It gives the kitchen a bit of time. <laughs> now, all of you, sit down and tuck okay. in. Thank you so much. Please. Thanks, Gordon. That looks so damn good. Doesn't it? With word out to the locals and the college students about the Chester's new vibe, this hotel is ready for business. How are y'all doing? Checking in? Yes. Checking in for two under Sanford. As the new younger clientele begin checking in, it's clear the renovated rooms are a hit. This is How awesome. How nice is this? It feels so big and so bright. Just wow. We need one of these sculptures at home. While the rooms are proven to impress, the renovated beer garden is also creating a buzz with students, parents, and locals. We need to get a little taste. Yeah, everybody needs to order something different. Fried green tomatoes. Do you want anything from the grill? That's my uh, it's my little one of everything. What are you drinking, buddy? David seems reinvigorated as an owner and is really getting into it. Let me get your glasses. Just call them out to me. I'm thrilled to death. Just looking out there and seeing people eating good food and drinking good craft beers and conversing is uh, exactly the kind of environment I wanted out there. I need a burger medium, a fish and chips, pulled cool pork. And without Suki in the kitchen, the new head chef is doing a fantastic job of making wonderful meals and getting them out in a timely manner. That is it for high one. Right. So now we're working high two. Make him sweat, God damn it! There you go. All right, buddy. The biggest thing Gordon has done is giving me a new sense of confidence and an opportunity to have my wife be my wife again. My favorite has been the uh, Gordon's hamburger. I'm not a hamburger eater. 
and it's a fantastic and it's a money back guarantee. I'll give you money back if you don't like it. <laughs> That's the best burger in Starkville without a close second. It is. It is, so, this is the so best of everything. Now that the Hotel Chester is catering to what the locals want, and with Suki and David embracing the changes, I know my job here is almost done. Time to say goodbye. Hey, Gordon. I'm going to miss you both. We're going to miss you too. Look after each other. Embrace these students, their parents, and get this hotel full. When I see you behind that bar serving pints, yes, that sir. for me is you and your element. All right. Take care of yourselves. Yes, sir. OK? Well done, darling. Seeing you bouncing around out there tonight, happy in front of customers rather than stressed. Good to see you. Take care of yourself. <sighs> wow. I'm sorry, I forgot one little thing. Can you come with me, please? Yeah. One little thing before I go. The relaunch of the Hotel Chester is a huge success. Can you come with me, please? Yeah. Now Suki and David are on their way to making this hotel the talk of the town. Get in the car, please. But before I leave, I have one more surprise for them. Right, there's one more little thing I wanted to show you. Isn't this place beautiful? That gorgeous pool there. Both of you, come in for two seconds. Now, living in that tiny room with no windows is not the way to live. So, this is your new apartment. I rented this for the next six months, and I'm sure when the business kicks off, you'll have sufficient funds to oh, rent this apartment. Oh, I love it. Open plan kitchen, lounge. Have a quick look at the bedrooms through there. Beautiful. This is just what we really needed for Dave and me to get away. <laughs> uh, there we go. Oh, Dave, this is nice. Oh, this is, this this is, is nice. This is so sweet. <laughs> Thank you. Me. Thank you. Some time out. That is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you again. That's awesome. Um, just damn flabbergasted, actually. Being on site and not having time out of your hotel, you were blind to the potential on your doorstep. It was ridiculous. Thank you. We thought Gordon was just coming here to help us with the business. He ended up being helping us emotionally, our marriage. He very much wanted for us to be together and that was so lovely that's pretty damn awesome no question mm, about it really really nice yes thank you again now i'm gonna hug you too <laughs> take care of you okay i'm spend, gonna kiss you too so, <laughs> spend some quality time together uh, you deserve it good night and good luck all right bye gordon bye bye now that's a new start for me and it's just definitely a new start for Suki. So I'm going to get naked in the pool right now. <laughs> it's so nice to see two people finally happy. Strawberries on fucking sushi. What was she thinking? Since my visit, the Hotel Chester's bookings have gone up. Have y'all stayed with us before? No, this is the first time. And the guests are enjoying the new improvements. It's just not generic, run of the mill. I think, I think this is something special yeah. now. It does feel special. Like it's, it's actually had a touch of care given yeah. to it. With the new menu and beer garden, the hotel has become a local hit with the college kids. I don't know what this yeah. is, but I enjoy it. Craft beer you had? Uh huh. I mean, it was outstanding. You was know? it? Yes. I mean, the local brewery, Mississippi, plus you had a mix of everything. Oh. So you had the uh, sampler. Had the, sampler. Sampler. the new buzz around town means the Hotel Chester is now bringing in thousands of guests every weekend. And David and Suki are working as a team again. Next March 8th, was it booked for a reception for about 150 to 200 people. So they want all about 36 rooms for two nights. Gordon has saved us. Our relationship as husband and wife is better. We'll be, we are now partners. I'm gonna give y'all a hug. Come on, Jill. I'm Get so you. excited. Come on, guys. What Gordon has done for us means everything to us. And I think Gordon's helped to put the hotel on the map. Let's go suck face for a of the while. Thing. <laughs> Thank you.
The Four Seasons Inn is located in West Dover, in Vermont's beautiful Green Mountains. Former construction worker Sandy McDougall purchased the inn, which has 14 bedrooms and an adjacent kennel, as the culmination of a lifelong dream. Since I was a kid, I've always wanted to own an inn. I always wanted to be able to please people and give them a happy experience. The smell really <clears throat> does me in a little bit. Yeah. yeah. A hair was found. A what? A dog hair. A dog hair? Impossible. This is a dream come true. It's a beautiful inn. It's a great place. It's a little slice of heaven. I don't know what kind of stain that is, but I don't want to lay in it. Well, I thought it was. After only two years, Sandy's slice of heaven has turned into hell. I need to know why the phones are not working. It's been nothing but hemorrhaging money. The inn's bedrooms are almost always empty, and despite marketing itself as a dog-friendly hotel, the kennel lies unused. Currently standing into the inn, cash-wise, $1.15 million out of my but it's terrific. I'm glad I was able to help with that. Richard's my marketing director. I should be beating the hell out of him every day because he sucks. Richard, what's up? With no money coming in, the inn survives with just a skeleton crew who live in the inn for free instead of receiving a salary. And then I drink. Uh, I don't get paid, so it's not really a job. It's more volunteering. I don't really call it a job. Jesus. Where's my money? I want my money. I'm not getting paid. I hit rock bottom. As of this morning, I'm officially maxed out on three cards and $14 in my bank account. Well, I'll get the door. Sandy is genuinely a nice guy, but staff does not get paid. This is terrible. There's endless complaints about everything. Kind of reminds me of the nursing home I worked at. Why well, we get paid the big dollars? Fuck you, Steve. Sandy's own worst enemy is Sandy. Why the hell is the grill on? Sandy's best friend is his dog, Layla, who lives with him at the inn. Layla is an English setter. She's the greeter. She'll come in the dining room. She'll sit at your feet. The guests complain about dog hair everywhere, and it makes them feel disgusting. Dogs have hair. Dogs have dander. Dogs drool. I mean, dogs lick their own butt. You don't want them anywhere around the kitchen. Most days, there are more rooms occupied by the staff than guests. And if things don't turn around soon, this dog-friendly inn will have to be put to sleep. Sandy's ragged, beaten. We all are. If Gordon can't save this place, Four Seasons Inn is proper fucked. I can't let this hotel go. <sighs> he's running out of time, he's running out of money, and he's running out of energy. This is the death rattle. This is it. Good God, I can't be that screwed up, am I? This is exciting. I'm back in Vermont, heading towards the Four Seasons Inn. Trust me, I've stayed in a lot of crappy hotels, and I'm finally getting to stay in something sumptuous and amazing, the Four Seasons Inn. I've stayed at Four Seasons all over the world. They're fabulous hotels that define luxury, so this week should be a dream. Hello? Oh, God. Well, it certainly doesn't look like a Four Seasons to me. Oof. Hello. I was hoping for a dream, but this place looks like another nightmare. How are you, Jordan? My first name is? It's Jordan. I know what my name is. Thank you. My name is Sandy. Reception's calling sick? No, she is around. I will take care of that for you. OK, follow. great. Happy to uh, check in. We have 18 rooms in the end. The rooms are beautiful. What a fucking mess. Nice to see the bed's been made. I'm surprised I'm still standing after I opened that door. I swear to God, I thought I was going to shit myself. Do you have a room that's actually ready? Yes, I do. Thank you, sir. Hey, I'm a bit late for the old party. Uh, Sandy, hello? Oh, well. Really, the one room they don't make up. Aaron? Yeah? Run. I am pissed off. Room four is done yes, and ready to right go. Go up and check. There's just no excuse for not getting the rooms done on a timely fashion. This is my worst nightmare. Sandy? Sandy? Oh, hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah, brother. I was showing to the honeymoon suite. Oh, hey, I'm here. And I've lost Sandy. <laughs> this is, I've lost Sandy. It's a bit bizarre. Sandy is very scared of his 
his guests because he doesn't like when people like talk down about, you know, his inn or his food and stuff like that. So he hides in the kitchen. He showed me into the room that wasn't made and. Yeah, well, we're, we're yeah, we, oh, we were kind of in the okay. middle of doing all of them. And wh what do you do? I'm the massage therapist here, and I do hula constructing, and also the. <laughs> <laughs> Just say that again. The hula hoop instructing. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously, uh, a huge demand of Vermont for hula hoop dancers, right? Uh, not at all here in Vermont, but wow. I don't know. I kind of picked it up, and I like it. So. Um, you got another room for me? Yes, I do. Okay, great. Hula hoop instructor. Wow, fuck me, that's the first. Ah, at least the bed's made. Thank God for that. Thank you. Wow, this wallpaper, um, it's, uh, it's eye-catching, right? It came with the place. Right. Um, I have to be honest, I mean, I've been very fortunate enough to stay in lots of Four Seasons, but I haven't seen one quite like this. How long have you been affiliated? Ah, uh, we're not affiliated. We're the Four Seasons Inn. Oh, so you're not a Four Seasons? We're the Four Seasons Inn. Well, you're not a Four Seasons? No, no affiliation. Can you get away with that, legally? Yep. But they call themselves the Four Seasons. Where are the Four Seasons in? Incredible. And next month is going to be the Waldorf Astoria Lodge. No. No, I'm just... no, no. Um, well, I'm going to uh, unpack. Thank you, sir. Fuck me. Uh, four Seasons, yeah. More like four shades of shit. Wow. I've just found out that the Four Seasons Inn is about as far away from a luxury hotel as you can get. I need to find out what's really going on here. How are you? I'm good. So how long have you been here? About five months. I came here uh, to do like massage therapy and stuff, but then we didn't have like a really call for it because it was slow, so I just started housekeeping. Do you ever stay here? I, I do. Oh, you do? Yeah, I live here. How does that work, uh, salary-wise? I mean... I don't get one. <laughs> what do you mean, you don't get one? I've never gotten a paycheck. You're joking. No. So I'm you... kind of scared to ask him about it. <laughs> I'm not too wicked excited about not getting a paycheck, but I don't have a full-on conversation with Sandy about it because I am scared that he's going to yell at me and I just don't want to take it. God, so how can you treat this place professionally if you're not getting paid? In? You can't really, I guess, treat it professionally. You can't, no. Like, uh... Bloody hell. Yeah. No one gets paid. What an embarrassment. Take it, eh? I can't believe Sandy doesn't pay his housekeeper. Oh, God. No wonder my room was such a mess. I hope the food here is better than the rooms. It's lonely in here. Where the hell is everybody? Hello. Hello. My name's Gwen. Gwen, nice to see you. Where did you pop out of? <laughs> uh, Popped out of the kitchen. <laughs> Gonna get you started with a glass of water here. <laughs> uh, hi, Layla. <laughs> That's Layla. She kind of runs the house here, yeah, if you I'll haven't say, met her yeah. yet. Yeah, she seems busier than the owner. <laughs> um, entrees. I'll have the mushroom ravioli. Sounds delicious. Let's go for the salmon as well after that. Cut with apples, finish with maple glaze, and a apple risotto. And you would like the apple risotto. OK, great. All right. She's placing an order. Man them up. I'm so nervous, I'm trying not to puke. I puked last night before service and uh, after service, and I'll probably do the same tonight. Apple risotto with the salmon, salmon seared. Not cooked through. You yes. got it, baby. I think we're going to knock our socks off with the food. Fantastic. All right, well, we have some bread for you. What do you think? Yeah, disgusting. It's just so heavy and doughy. Hey, oh. you eat that? Uh. Curry bread. <laughs> You'll eat anything. Gordon did not approve of the curry bread. Oh, Lord. Sandy, being a business owner with no culinary experience or training in any way. That's what I was saying last night, it's doughy. I don't feel that he should be back in the kitchen working. Gone. Stay with me, girl. It's only curry bread. I'm hoping these next couple of dishes are at least edible. Send it. Flavor. Flavor. Please. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of flavor here. Jesus. What was that? Uh, mushroom ravioli. Did the dog just throw up on my plate? I hope not. Wow. Jesus, God. How is it? Um, weird. Are oh, the pastas undercooked? Bizarre. Thank you. Sorry. No, it's not your fault. 
What's the main problems with this place? Um, management. I mean, the management is Sandy, right? Yeah. I've worked for him and haven't received checks. Oh, wow. Staff have worked hard mm -hmm. and not been paid. Yeah. Wow. Jeez, that's tough. Sandy can be extremely hard to work with and for. Bizarre and weird. Good God, can this get any worse? He said it's undercooked. OK. All food in-house right now that is coming off of this menu, none of it is local, none of it is fresh. Sandy's menu is garbage. Hello, Gordon. Good afternoon. Customer, right? Richard. Oh, Richard, I'm sorry. First time we met. And Richard, you're not a customer. What do you do? I work with Sandy on ideas for marketing. When was the last big idea you put into the last, Four Seasons? The last big idea we had was purchasing lift tickets at a discounted rate. Right. I would have fired you five months ago. Coming into the summer, what's the next big plan? In I can present plenty of, plenty of ideas, but he has to accept them. I'm frustrated. I feel that the ideas I bring to him are helpful. They would work, but Sandy... He's just not listening. And here is your salmon. Excellent. Thank you, my darling. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Good God. I hope it's at least halfway good. And that is a apple risotto. Wow. What a pile of shit. That sums it up on that plate there. He's as good a chef as he is an innkeeper. Fucking useless. I can't believe I've not seen Sandy once through my whole meal. What sort of innkeeper ignores his guests and hides in the kitchen? Well, if you won't come to me... Just give me that knife now. Hi, guys. Hi. Uh, I'm Steve Dixon. Steve, good to see you, bud. Bill. Bill, nice good to see you, you too, bud. I'm trying to get a grasp on what I've just eaten. I know you're the owner. Yes. But you're the head chef as well. Buzz, we're working together now in town. So you're both head chefs? I've, I'm... I, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not exactly sure where I fit in. It, it, it's not my menu. I'm not doing any ordering. I feel with Sandy right now, a little thrown under the bus. I feel a little betrayed right now. The risotto was sweet. What was in there? Apple juice? Apple concentrate, chef. An apple concentrate in a risotto? Yes, sir. Come on. It, it's not my menu, chef. So this is all you're doing, then? Yeah. Oh, my god. Can I just have five minutes on, the, yes. on my own with the owner? Would you mind? Yes, sure. You know, how do you expect something magical when it's coming out of a fucking can? 23 fucking years I wait to give them fucking apple juice concentrate. I just feel absolutely destroyed. My food is so much better than what I just fucking gave Gordon. The fuck? And you know, how am I going to go home and face my kids when they're all proud of me? And I'm like, he fucking dogged our food. You know, that's not why I became a chef. If you're in the kitchen cooking, who's running the inn? Honestly, I'm here and I'm busting my butt trying to get it to where it should be. There's no one running this inn. That's the problem. Apart from being soulless, it's rudderless. It's just a free-for-all. You've checked out. No, I haven't. Why would anyone come and stay here? Because it's a nice place in the country. It's like a house of madness. Yeah, but it's... It starts with you, Sandy. Everyone's saying the management, the management, the management. Everybody's blaming the management. The management's you. What a joke. I'm ready to burn the building down. The one thing Vermont's fake Four Seasons has going for it is its beautiful riverside location. Lovely. What's that building over there? A guest house? It's a dog kennel. Is it used? No. The kennel doesn't do anything. Radiant heat floor, renewable energy with pellets in the furnace. They're cramped and bare. It looks like a prison. And what's through here? This is a giant indoor play area for the dogs. A play area? I wouldn't put my dog in a place like this. What a waste. But it all looks unused. They are. Jeez. My marketing executive sucks. I think you're right. Crazy. Word has got out that I'm in town, so the Four Seasons dining room is full of customers for the first time in months. Here we are. Dinner is served. I feel sorry for all of them. Sandy, honestly, I wouldn't even feed that to a dog. Or are you familiar with the area? Living town. Oh, nice. With everyone looking after the restaurant. Water, food, get it out of here. I'm tired of waiting. And Sandy burying himself in the kitchen, 
there's no one to look after the inn. You guys checking in? We are. So the servers are forced to check in guests in the middle of dinner service. The room rate's 275. Is that okay. get that to you right now? Thank you very much. No problem. Is that normal there? Friday night, walking like that? You just charge him $275. Can you just go and ask the owner? Excuse me, Sandy? Yes. How much is Friday walk-in? 209. OK, because Desiree told me 275, so. How come nobody knows? We need a level of consistency across the board. From now on. 300 with tax is a joke. I don't think I've been properly trained at the desk. I'm, I feel like I'm training myself. Go and apologize to them. So it's 209 now, right? <laughs> the inn is the busiest it's been in months, but Sandy's still hiding in the kitchen, oh, playing chef. Oh, for God's sake. Upstairs, guests are experiencing the unique charm of the Four Seasons Inn. We don't have any towels, and we found some garbage under the bed. Okay. There's that and a light bulb. I just would have been really upset if my dog had eaten a light bulb. Oh, geez, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can't get over the barking dog in the background. Barking is unnerving. I can't believe an owner turned such a blind eye to the problems in his inn. I've got to stop him hiding behind the stove. You take two minutes out, go have a look at the dining room, check on things. Do you have any idea what's going on out there? Right now, I'm needed. I feel my, my need is right back here. Can you handle this line, Steve, for 30 Absolutely, seconds? Chef. Absolutely, Chef. Absolutely, Chef. Has a look at his business before it sinks any further. Is he for real? He's an owner, not someone who should be doing what I should be doing. Bottom line. I've just never seen this shit going on before. This is unorganized fucking chaos is what this is. I'm glad somebody has got their fingers on the fucking pulse. How was everything? I didn't eat. My risotto wasn't creamy risotto for one. And the vegetables were very, very hard. Like, it has been another garden. How was everything so far? <laughs> Lay it they brought out. the food out the wrong order. They brought the entree first. And, and that was after a 40-minute wait. Being told in the restaurant nothing's at the level you think it was, it's like getting kicked in the nuts. I feel like I just wanted to run into the kitchen and hide. Sandy avoiding his guests is a mad way to run it in. But it's the lack of pay that's crippling his business. I have to confront it head on. Let's have five minutes together in the lounge, please, everybody. Sure. Holy Jesus. What is about to go down now? Who in this room actually gets paid? That's why there's no standards, because nobody's getting paid, so there's no responsibilities. If you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. If you pay nothing, you get fuck all. Zero. It's not a business, it's a fucking joke. Talk to me, Sandy. Honestly, Gordon, we started off with all the good intentions and we've had every bump in the road. Because when we started out, we started out wonderfully. Stop it! It's an embarrassment. Stop the lies. There's no lies. Right? You were not booming when you first opened. Air it out. Go ahead. Nobody believes it, Sandy. Where's your marketing? There's nothing to market. So what have you done? For God's sakes, man. Please. I'm exhausted. It's been nerve wracking to watch this go off in the wrong direction. You can't run a business with no infrastructure. And you can't have a business that's got nobody heading it. Enough for one day. I'm going to pick this up in the morning, night. Good night, Chef. I wish I could say good night. Ah, truth hurts. I guess I can be one big asshole, can I? A threadbare innings. And a disgusting, smelly pillow. So far, my stay at Vermont's fake Four Seasons has been a huge disappointment. The owner doesn't know his ass from his elbow. Oh, that's nice. The staff don't get paid. The guests are miserable. There's a stain here next to the bed. Only Lady the dog is happy here. I'm hoping a quick dip in the swimming pool will get my day off to a better start. Does that look like a present from Layla, a floating turd? Oh, my God. Layla, did you shoot in the pool? There's no way I'm going in there. How about the hot tub? Slightly warm. And Layla hasn't taken a shit in it. Great news. Oh. 
Oba. Oh, man. The actual hot tub's quite nice. What a gorgeous view to the river. This place has a lot of potential, but only if I can get Sandy to stop hiding from his guests and the problems here. I'm going to confront him with his worst nightmare, to wake him up to his responsibilities as an innkeeper. Morning, Gordon. Hey, guys. How are you doing, chef? Doing well. Come upstairs. Something I want to show you. Yeah? I'm thinking, OK, he's going to show me something wrong. Maybe the hole in the wallboard by the door. <sighs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. No. There's a room full of people. I thought I was going to pass out. I'm here to help this place. I really need your honest feedback. Sir, would you mind if we start with you? There was a, a sign that I liked when we came in about all dogs have to be on your leash. And we had our dog. And we come in, and it was immediately another dog coming at us, not on a leash. And our dog's friendly, but it always takes a few minutes with new animals. Sure. I had read that it was dog friendly. But I thought it was really interesting that there was a dog laying in the dining room. And as much as we like dogs, I don't want a dog in where I'm eating. Um, I agree. I think that's disgusting. There's one last person I'd like to introduce you to, Amy Loomis. This lady is the general manager of one of the Hilton brand hotels. And if there's one thing this lady knows, it's how to run a hotel. First impressions, walking oh. in. At dinner, there was dog hair on the tablecloth, dog hair on the plate that we were given. I asked to speak with a manager. I was told there is no manager. We have an owner. I said I'd like to speak with them then. I was told you were too busy. I've never had the complaints that I had today. It's humiliating. It's embarrassing. It's like being flogged in the center of town. There's something I need to show you all. I need you all to put a pair of these on, please. Oh, no. No. You OK? You got a funny color? I'm hot and absorbing everything. Yeah? Yes. OK. Lights off. Now, this black light shows up bodily fluids. What? Oh. I see a round circle. I just thought, yeah, just, yeah. Oh, right there, round circle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Yes. Big one. Hmm. Sandy, can you see that? Yes. Yeah, I slept on that pillow. Oh. Um, charging guests to sleep on such filth is outrageous. The quilt. Oh. See the splashes? Oh yeah. Do you know what that is? Oh, I don't, don't want to know. know. Oh it begins with S. Oh. Yeah, and I'm sorry. Yeah, disgusting. But I want to show you something over by your feet. Sandy, come over here. Oh, no, no, no. Uh -oh. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. The carpet, Sandy? Yes. I mean, honestly, yes. madam, your feet are right on it. Yeah. Uh, look. Yeah. You see that? Yes. Stands on the carpet, or I, I have no idea. That could be a dog, that could be a human. If it's a human, good Christmas. Just when you thought it was safe to walk in bare feet, mm -hmm. trust me, that has never, ever been clean. Uh. Absolutely disgusting. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please take your glasses off. Chef, we have uh, another day to stay here today and tomorrow. And after seeing the light, I don't want to stay here tonight. I don't want to put my head on that pillow or any of the other pillows. No one would return. And the existing guests that we have want to check out. Thank you, madam. Please. You. You're looking at a room full of customers who are looking at you saying, I can't believe you put me in there. And that's maddening. And it's embarrassing. I need some fresh air. I feel sick. It sucks to know where I am right, right now. It's horrifying. It does hurt me inside. The tears just keep coming out of my face. It's not what I wanted. I'm mortified. It's been a tough few days at the Four Seasons Inn. Um, do we have another room? Because I'm not going to be staying in here. The food is fucking hideous. This black light shows bodily fluids. <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. I don't want to stay here tonight. I don't want to put my head on that pillow. The truth has been hard for Sandy to hear. 
but he's finally realized the damage that hiding from his customers has caused. Now that I've opened his eyes, I've got to figure out a way to make his business work. Hello, Layla. So that Sandy has no excuses not to pay his staff. You have so much weight on your shoulders, and you're being totally oblivious to what your customers need. You cannot run an inn from behind a stove. You're not the head chef, you're the innkeeper. And that can be a, an amazing job. That can be an amazing prospect. That can be an exciting role. Trust okay. me, I am ready. I spent last night crying. There's no lie. This was the dream since I was a little kid. This is what I want. I love what I do. But I would love to get back to where I should be as an innkeeper. You have a potential gold mine here. Embrace it. OK? Yes, sir. I know it's hard. Yeah, you. It's normal to get upset, but just embarrassed, get mortified. Your yes, head out, out of my ass, and absolutely start building a dream. We're gonna make this work. Thank you, sir. Okay. With Sandy committed to change, it's time to get the crew involved. Let's go and have a, a couple of minutes outside on the terrace. Uh, to have some very important breaking news. This man, from this day on, is not the head chef. This man is going to become the innkeeper. No longer will he be burying his head inside the kitchen, ignoring issues. He'll be running his inn. You are the chef. And this is your general manager. And as a reminder to make sure we step forward and not backwards, he is not going to be needing these fucking things. <laughs> Say goodbye to Sandy's chef coats. Gordon, Gordon. Yeah. Gordon. yeah. Burn that thing, get rid of that thing. He has no business wearing it. <laughs> Thank you. You may be a great guy, but you are not a fucking great chef. Let's get that right. There's a big difference. There is. Gordon coming here has opened my eyes to my shortcomings. I love what I do, and I need to start doing it. Got it? Yes, sir. There are some very big changes coming tomorrow. Embrace them. Get ready for it. This inn has been neglected for so long, but now I'm finally giving it the makeover it truly deserves. Come on, girl. Good morning. Good morning, Gordon. Wow. Sandy, you look incredible. Thank you, sir. Man, I feel oh, incredible. Man. How you doing? I feel liberated, to be honest with you. <laughs> You're great. Huh? With the fresh shave, new haircut, I feel amazing. I feel like a million dollars. I feel like what I spent on my end. Uh, what do you guys think of your new innkeeper? Uh, Mr. Party, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> you look like a proper innkeeper and an owner. Right, when I first arrived, I drove into the Four Seasons Inn, but this establishment is a one-off. It's not part of a chain, right? Yeah. No, sir. So you deserve your own name, your own identity, and something that you can be proud of. Everybody is going to know you now as... Yes. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, Riverside Lodge. Great rooms, fresh food, and luxury kennels. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Layla's Riverside Lodge is amazing. The name's awesome, the sign's beautiful. It just uh, screams me. What do you think? I think it's absolutely perfect and represents something so meaningful to Sandy. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. You okay? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm positive. Yeah? <laughs> Layla, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Should we go inside? Love to. This is the new reception area. Have a look at this. Oh, shit. Oh, what? <laughs> wow. So, let's welcome our guests in to a proper reception area. This is inviting. This is warm. I love it. Is it nice? Breathtaking. Is it lovely? Gorgeous. If you have an inviting lounge, then you need the menu to go with it. Gents, come through, please. I've created a farm-to-table menu of fresh food that will give people a warm and friendly Vermont welcome. I've revamped the entire menu. Let me tell you about some of my favorites. 
homemade country pate. I mean, look where we are. Look at the farm surrounding the inn. How can you not have a stunning country pate? Wonderful poutine done with a braised pork shoulder. Stunning chicken pot pie, easy to execute for the kitchen. Baked, job done. And then a stunning Vermont cheesecake. Oh, my God. How are you feeling? Very hopeful for the future now. Are you happier now that Sandy is out of the kitchen? <laughs> I am absolutely ecstatic <laughs> that Sandy is out of sure. the kitchen. <laughs> the menu is absolutely perfect. All right, now, don't be shy. Oh, my God. Wow, that pasta is a world of difference, man. Before, when people asked me where I worked, I used to hang my head and say the Four Seasons. I'm not going to do that no more. I can look them right in the eye and say I work at Layla's. It's going to be good. I'm delighted they like the new name and new menu. I can't wait to see what they think of the bedrooms. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Gone is that hideous wallpaper, replaced with this stunning wooden feature. Oh, <laughs> I love the deer. Oh, awesome. I love that. that. We have steamed the carpet. So gone are those hideous stains. We have a luxury bed for the dog. And what I was more depressed with than anything was the linen was hideous. We have replaced the bedding in every room of your inn with a hundred thousand dollars of organic linens. Huh? You happy? You happy? Ecstatic. That's really overwhelming. Do you want to see another room? I'd love to. This one you're gonna love. Oh, Welcome. Wow. Room three. Look at this. Wow. Gone are those flimsy bunk beds. Give your guests some space. It's something I would want to check into. Mm. I love the new rooms. They're amazing. I actually can't wait to clean them. <laughs> I'm really excited about how everything came together. There's one more exciting thing I've got to show you, something that I feel can transform this business. You ready? Um, yes, sir. Let's go. I've just revealed yes. the new improvements to Sandy's Inn. However, there's still one more surprise I have for him that will really put Layla's on the map. Welcome to the thing that makes your lodge unique. <laughs> a new and improved dog kennel. Oh, my God. Amazing. I'm stunned. <laughs> oh. Wow. We've doubled the size of these kennels. We've made them feel luxurious. We have beautiful brand new bedding. When I first arrived, these kennels felt like a prison. Now it feels like a reward or a treat. Any dog lover want their dogs to stay. Even me, I'd bring my old dogs here. Do you wanna do you wanna meet Rumpol? Rumpol? Oh. Hello, mate. Hello, bud. There he is. Oh, Come here. Rump hold me, Layla. Come on. Hello. Hello. Hey, look. Oh, yeah. Hey, look oh, at yeah. you. Who's that? Who's that? Hey, oh, Rump hold. Oh, huh? Yes. Thank you. Look at that. Look at that. Huh? How gorgeous. Now, this part, for me, is one of the most exciting parts. Come this way. Please come in. Oh, that's where you went. My <laughs> God. I've never seen the kennel with that many dogs and that many people. Oh, you know, oh my God. And that many smiles. Oh, this is great. You OK? Yes. You sure? Oh, yes. The dogs are here because we've organized a dog agility competition. Oh, no kidding. Wow. And all the owners are going to be checking in and staying in the inn this evening. Wow. This kind of event can be done every month which will drive dog enthusiasts to come and stay in your stunning lodge. Absolutely. Sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. So we've been livened the place up, given it warmth. Yes. And Sandy, this is Shannon Hagum. You may recognize this lady. Oh, yes, I do. She is a luxury boarding kennel consultant. That's she amazing. has very kindly donated to you $10,000 worth of consultancy awesome. that she is going to help wow. implement and get this business off the Thank ground. You. Now, let's get back to the inn. Thank you, Madame. With a delicious new menu and a name of its own, Layla's Riverside Lodge is ready to open its doors and show off its stunning new look. 
Ladies, guys, this is the night that we come back from the dead. We've been afforded all the tools, a great front of house, a great back of house. We're going to make this rock. Yep. <laughs> yeah. some bar. If we blow this, we're, we're screwed. Good evening and welcome to Layla's. My name is Sandy. I'm your innkeeper. Hi. Follow me. I'll take you to your room. Thank you. Here we go. Very nice. Wow. The renovated rooms are a big hit with the new guests. Can't wait to get under the sheets. Let me try this. Oh, yeah. She's got a little place where she can just kind of hang out and just, you know, be herself right by the window. She can look at the pool and she's got her own porch. Look at that. <laughs> wow. This is awesome. Dinner's underway. It's to die for, isn't it? And at last, Sandy is spending time with his hotel guests and letting his chefs do the cooking. Good evening. How was everything? It was great. It was Fantastic. Tonight is the best night we've had here. There wasn't one complaint. There wasn't one plate with food left on it. This is the difference between last time that we were here and this time. It's just phenomenally different. <laughs> Thanks, Sandy. Thank you. <laughs> Well done staking the oven. Love the communication, yeah? Tonight, it actually is like cooking in a real kitchen. No Sandy back there. Everybody's trained. Everybody's on the same page. We got great food, everything from scratch. 716. Out through the out. Bag, any concerns? Good. We're good, no, baby. Sir, yes, That's what I want to hear. And while Sandy's human guests are loving the food, his canine guests are finding lots to love as well. So welcome to the new kettle. Wow, right? Carrie, uh -huh. smells nice. You got friends, it's fantastic. Yeah. You have to be thrilled, yeah. it's beautiful. I'm on cloud nine. I hope to ride this high for many years to come. I mean, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> this inn is finally on the right track, so it's time for me to say goodbye. All right, well done, good job. Thank you, Chef. Yeah, really good job indeed. And uh, do not let him back in this kitchen. No, sir. No, okay. sir. Rice, tough one. We had our highs and lows, but you are really starting to grasp yes. the potential. One no little surprise, everybody's going on payroll tomorrow. Everybody. They're all going to have a paycheck every week. Really? Yes. That's music to my ears. I'm pleased to hear it. Listen, good luck. Thank you, sir. Take care. Take care. Yeah. Gordon, save my lodge, save my ass, save my life. Sandy's running around like a, a new man. He's starting to look and sound like an innkeeper. And if he keeps this up, this gorgeous inn can become an amazing place for a great weekend. Rubble, let's go. Come on, come on, bye. Come on, you can't stay, come on. Come on. I know the room's nice, but we've got to go home, come on. You lazy fucker. Come on, we've got to go. We have to go. I know it's comfy, come on. You, young man, are lazy. Home sweet home. Oh, I know. This way. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Let's go. Here we go. Yes. Do you know what, Ron Paul? Sometimes you can teach an old dog new tricks, or at least make him take a bath. <laughs> Coming up. Have a seat. Sandy has shocking news for his staff. Good morning, Layla's Riverside Lodge. Since my visit, business at Layla's has been booming, and everyone is sharing in the uh, inn's success. It's 500 bucks. Tomorrow, W2, heavy rock, OK? Hey, we got a great team, and you're part of it. My staff beats the world to me. Every week, you get paid. Fantastic. Thank Thank you. Wanted to hear, man. Because it's a team effort. You've got to have people that believe in you. Every week, you get a paycheck. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Gordon, from the bottom of my heart. Oops. If it hadn't been for you, I would not be here. That's the truth. Thank you. And now, all the staff are back in Sandy to make Layla's Riverside Lodge a success. Oh. Rich, you said you'd take it for the team, brother. Here we go. Finally, with something to market, Richard is taking his sales technique to a whole new level. Oh, yeah, baby. Come on, Rich. Let's go have a look at the side. Wait, come, come, come here and hold my paw. 